and actually clear my throat. <clears> throat> Alright guys, Unit 12. This is our second to last unit of the year. Alright, we're going to be talking about Redox today. And these are the different chapters and topics from the books that we have that you guys should be reading along with. And today we're going to be going over some of the basics like vocabulary, some phonetics, uh, talking about oxidation numbers, and then common things like oxides, the idea of corrosion, and what are antioxidants. So what is redox? Redox is a process in which one substance or molecule is reduced and another is oxidized. Oxidation and reduction considered together as complementary processes, which is why we call it redox. So oxidation is the loss of electrons, or as we otherwise call it, an increase in oxidation state by using a molecule, atom, or ion. And reduction is the gaining of electrons or a decrease in your oxidation state by a molecule, atom, or ion. So here is iron. Iron is going to be oxidized, which means it's going to lose its electrons, and it increases an in oxidation number. And those red dots are supposed to represent your valence electrons. These are the electrons on the outermost shell that are most responsible for the actual bonding. Right. As this is a chemical process, remember only valence electrons can, you know, be changed. So some phonetics that you guys definitely need to know. One of the main ones that we say all the time is Leo says Ger. All right. You should probably write this down somewhere in your reference table, either right on front or in with the periodic table. Okay. So when you lose electrons, you're being oxidized. But if you gain electrons, you are being what we call reduced. Another one that you can use is oil rig, which is oxidation is loss of electrons, and then reduction is gain, or gaining electrons. But they both mean the same thing. They're just two different ways of yeah. thinking this out. Pick which one you like and use that. So if we think about the charges of electrons and a neutral atom, we should know that all atoms are neutral. If you're on the periodic table, you're neutral. So that means you do not have a difference in electrons and protons. But if you were to lose electrons and become like a positive three number, okay, that means that you went from neutral to being oxidized. The other thing you should think of is if you're losing electrons, you're losing negative charges. So what's left over is that positive charge, which is why you're increasing the value. So the opposite would be gaining. So if you were to gain electrons, you would actually become a negative number, and we call that process reduction. And again, you're gaining negative charges, so you become more and more negative. Remember, it's all about the electrons, because the electrons are responsible for making these bonds. So now we have two different formulas on top. And I want you guys to see if you can determine which one is showing you a redox reaction and which one is showing you an oxidation reaction. Here's a hint. Look at what's on the reactant side and what's on the product side. So for the very first one we're noticing, you just have pure copper. Pure copper is being oxidized, and you're noticing it's going from a neutral copper to an ion of copper. And it's also releasing two electrons. And then the bottom one, which is silver ion, is gaining two electrons and grabbing a total charge of neutral at the end because there's no charge there. So it's being reduced. And like Ms. Diamatopoulos said before, be very careful to where you see the electrons. If electrons are a product, it's oxidation. If electrons are a reactant, that means they are undergoing reduction. Good. So what is redox? All of these things are examples of redox reactions. Which because is why it's my favorite topic. Look at how yeah. amazing all of these pictures so are. So many cool things happen in redox reactions. But reduction ac uh, reactions are all about oxygen. So iron and oxygen make rust. Napalm coming out of the flamethrower plus the oxygen in the air makes deathly fire. Coal burns, wood burns, and rocket fuel burns all in the presence of oxygen. So oxygen is going to be our main thing that does oxidation. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. But oxidation does not actually always require oxygen, but it, it's just one of the primary things that causes oxygen. Mm -hmm. So look at the original Statue of Liberty. 
it looks a lot different than how we see the Statue of Liberty. Because the original Statue of Liberty was made of pure copper. So technically, this is what it should look like if it never was oxidized. So the difference between the left picture and the right picture is the entire redox reaction. And same thing with same fruit. Same thing with an apple, yeah. yeah. Or even if you go home and you have like avocados, like when you make guacamole or you just slice up avocados, it will start to oxidize or brown. Mm -hmm. But it, it, did you know if you put lemon juice on either apples or on avocado slices, they won't brown at all? I did know that. Ooh. But did you also know. know that, well, you probably don't because you probably don't do this, but hair dye... After a while, the dye itself gets dulled in your hair because of oxidation. Really? Yeah, my hairdresser told me that. That's pretty neat. Yeah. That is pretty neat. So the next time I get bleach blonde hair, I might come back like gold? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's kind of weird. So what are oxides, guys? So oxides are a chemical compound that contain at least one oxygen atom in them. So if you look at all of these pigments on the right... Um, they're all some sort of iron mixed with oxygen. And you're noticing, because iron is a transition metal, you're getting color powder. And these color powders are great because you can mix them with water to make a solution, and then you can use them as paints. And whenever we have these metal oxides, they will always contain an oxygen in the oxidative state of negative 2. Because if you look on your periodic table, oxygen only has a negative 2 charge. So any of these little powders that you're looking at, they all have oxygens of negative two charges. So again, now we're just going to be looking at some examples between aluminum and iron. You're noticing that aluminum sort of makes a four nanometer layer that blocks out air. So aluminum has its own natural way of protecting itself. Uh, unlike iron, which when it does oxidize, it makes kind of that crumbly, rusty sensation. So if you ever rub your hand against like a rusty fence, mm -hmm. you'll get all that rust on you because it flakes off. Other things that have been oxidized, for example, the Statue of Liberty, hence why it's that blue color. Copper is traditionally a blue color in solution, so that's why it's blue, Statue of Liberty. And a lot of meteorites that come in from the upper atmosphere from outer space, they immediately start to oxidize because they, in space, have no oxygen. But when they enter our atmosphere, they immediately oxidize with the heat, causing chemical reactions to change the actual configurations and formulas of the different elements inside of meteorites. So corrosion, which is the, a rust, right? Corrosion is a process by which a metal is oxidized by the oxygen in the atmosphere. So there's different types of corrosion. There's silver tarnishing, and then there's iron rusting. Um, all of those are under the, the classification of corrosion, though. So here's iron going through its rusting process. Um, iron mixing with oxygen and water in the atmosphere will naturally produce this iron hydroxide. So aluminum, as we know, is going to be resistant because it forms that protective coating. That protective coating blocks all water. Water, again, has oxygen molecules, and it also blocks diatomic oxygen in the atmosphere. So this aluminum oxide acts as a protective coating. Other so, ways of making protective coatings, for example, could be like painting the surfaces of things, like using rust-oleum. Oh, is that what rust-oleum is for? Yeah, rust-oleum. It stops rust. Uh, you can also use zinc blocks to attach to steel hulls of ships to prevent the, uh, the hull from uh, actually corroding. Yeah, because when you're in salt water, metal hates salt water and will instantly start to corrode. Mm -hmm. So these zinc blocks are sacrificial. Again, look at the Statue of Liberty around a whole bunch of salt water and look at what happened to mm -hmm. it. And the other thing is, guys, you'll notice a lot of your faucets or um, piping at home is chromed. That means it has chromium metal on a protective coating on the outside or inside, and that would keep all the fluids, either outside or inside the pipe, from causing corrosion. So antioxidants, which you probably have heard all about, uh, but not necessarily know what they're for. So antioxidants are chemicals that may fight uh, damage due to disease and aging. The way they work is that they block the oxidation process. Um, so the type of natural chemical reaction that actually can harm cells. So when you think about the entirety of cellular respiration, which is what humans do, sugar in, oxygen in, that oxygen actually harms cells. Pure oxygen is incredibly toxic to most things, including us. So why do they have oxygen bars then? It's like, like a percent or two more percent higher than atmospherical. Oh. So it's supposed to make you feel a little bit better. It's supposed to rejuvenate you. Oh. 
But if you were to like inhale pure oxygen, I think your lungs would combust into flame instantaneously. <laughs> I'm not too, I think so. <laughs> yeah. All right. So antioxidants, again, they're just, they're used to keep uh, healthy cells in plants and animals and people um, from being oxidized. However, as organisms tend to make fewer of these antioxidants uh, as we get old, that's one of the reasons scientists suspect that oxidation is related to many types of chronic diseases like different heart problems or diabetes or even brain problems, which are found in a lot of older people. And as you age and the fewer of these ox antioxidants you're creating, there's less of them to defend our bodies, which means that oxidation or the entirety of rusting or corrosion can happen and damage more cells in our body. That's why they say dark fruits and vegetables are very healthy very good for, you, for you. Because they're very high in antioxidants, yeah. which in turn prevent your body from rusting like a car. Yeah. Which is kind of gross. That is kind of gross. Do I flake as well? Yeah, we do. We flake. Oh, I, so I love just these some, memes. So just some little memes to make you guys aware of some things. Like this one in the middle, Bill and Ted. That's my favorite. So, yeah. They don't hair. know who Bill and Ted are. Yeah, probably. If you know who Bill and Ted are, you probably have a very weird household. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, air's, air's poisonous. Air, basically, the oxygen in the air is super poisonous. It, when it binds up to us, causes oxides to be formed, and oxides are not good in your body. Mm -hmm. Just like they're not good on the surface of the car, they're not good in the cellular body. That's how dihydrogen is Alright guys, this is the last part of the lesson. Put this in your nose. Yep, you got a table. You can spread all this stuff out. Okay. We'll be talking more about the processes of oxidation in the class. We'll be doing this video. Other than that, you guys have a great night. Bye bye.